Welcome back to the AR-15 Barrel Series. Today, we're going to look at the BCM BFH Extreme Lightweight Barrel. And to step things up a bit, we'll be looking at two samples of this barrel to see how consistent they are. Coming up, we'll go over the specs, inspect both barrels to see if we can spot any differences. And after that, we'll head to the range and shoot some 30-shot groups and see what we get. All right, so these two samples were generously loaned to the channel by a subscriber, so a big thank you to him. Both of these barrels were purchased directly from BCM on January of 2022, and they were sent to me in unfired condition with their original packaging. The barrels are cold hammer forged from 4150 chrome molly vanadium steel and have a chrome line chamber and bore to increase service life. The main feature of this barrel is the profile and the weight. The ELW barrels have a continuous taper with more weight bias towards the rear and a thinner taper up front to help improve balance. There's also no shoulder on the gas block. BCM claims that this improves barrel harmonics. The exterior of the barrel is parkerized with a manganese phosphate finish per military specifications. Each BCM barrel is high pressure tested with a 70,000 PSI proof load and magnetic particle inspected afterwards to detect any flaws in the barrel surface. The barrels have a 5.56 NATO chamber and a 1 to 7 twist rate, half by 28 threads, mid length gas, a 0.625 inch gas lock journal with a dimple, and a gas board that measures at 0.075 inches. Next up, we'll take a closer look at things on the bench and start to see how similar and different these barrels are from each other. First, we'll start off with gauging both barrels. The first gauge is a throat erosion gauge and both barrels measure between a one and two on this gauge. Next up, we'll gauge the chamber dimensions to see if the chamber and throat are at least minimum size. And both barrels pass with this gauge. Next, to check headspace, I'm using a new JP Bolt and Forster headspace gauges. We will start with the 506 NATO minimum headspace gauge. And both barrels pass. Next, we have a 223 no-go gauge. And the bolt is able to spin with both barrels. So we will move on to a 223 field gauge. And the bolt is not able to close on the field gauge, so both barrels pass. And just to make sure that there is nothing significantly off with the bolt or gauges, we will use a reference barrel to double check. And the reference barrel today is a Criterion H bar. We will start with the go gauge. And the bolt spins as it should. Next, we'll move on to the 223 no go gauge. And the bolt is not able to lock in place meaning that the Criterion passed both gauges. Just to touch on headspace real quick, the 5.56 NATO chamber has a fairly wide range of what is considered serviceable headspace. So although the BCM ELW barrels failed the no-go gauge, but passed the field gauge, they are still below the maximum allowable headspace for a 5.56 NATO chamber. However, it's generally expected that a new 5.56 NATO barrel shouldn't fail a 2.23 no-go gauge, which is a fine standard to have, but the barrel is still technically within the serviceable headspace range. However, the headspace is not as tight as some would expect for a new barrel. Anyway, we'll move on to the weight. BCM advertises this barrel as being one pound, five ounces, and my scale rates pretty close at 1.3 pounds. And compared to other barrels that I've measured so far, the BCM ELW is not the lightest, but it's pretty close at 0 0.092 pounds per inch of barrel length. Next up, we'll look at some of the exterior dimensions, starting with the gas block journal. And you can see that both barrels are pretty close to one another only one ten thousandths of an inch apart. And if we look at the minimum clearance between the gas block journal and a gas block, the BCMs have the loosest fit that I have measured so far. So this means that you may have a little bit tougher of a time getting a good gas seal between your barrel and your gas block. Next up, we have the barrel extensions. And there is almost about a one thousandths difference between the two barrels. And if we compare this to the other barrels that I've measured so far, again, the BCMs have the largest clearance, which will result in the loosest fit with the upper receiver. So not looking so good here either. Let's move on to the bore scope. All right, so I'm using a bore scope that was provided by Teslong. It's their fold and focus model, which is available on their website, and you can get 10% off with my affiliate code, PM2025, if you're interested. And also a quick note about the bore scope footage. This was done after I got done shooting the groups and cleaning the barrel. Normally, I would prefer to take the bore scope footage before shooting the groups, but this is just how it worked out this time. Anyway, starting at the chamber, you can see some tool marks. It doesn't look like they're very deep, though but it looks like the chamber was cut with a reamer. Moving up to the throat, there are a few things to look at here. The right edge of the rifling lens looks to be a bit rough, more so on barrel number two. It doesn't look so bad on barrel number one. Also, the throat looks to be cut a little bit uneven on both barrels. You can see that the rifling starts in different places. Uh, I guess we'll see how that plays out with the groups. And next we'll move up a little bit to take a closer look at the rifling. And again, you can see some radial tool marks more so on barrel number two again. Since the rifling is cold hammer forged, I'm not sure what these tool marks are from, but they are pretty much all throughout the length of the bore, although they do get a little bit deeper as you get closer to the muzzle end. 
here's a straight view through the bore scope and you can see those tool marks a lot better. And it's pretty much like this from the chamber end to the muzzle on both barrels. Again, it looks like the radial tool marks get a little bit deeper as you get closer to the muzzle. Anyway, not sure what this is from, but feel free to leave a comment if you know what these are from. And here's a peek at the gas ports. There's nothing much to see here. Again, this was after shooting the groups. So you can see that there's some amount of wear here, which is totally normal. And here's a peek at the crowns. Again, you can see some of those radial tool marks up here. Also, the leading edge of the crown doesn't look to be super clean. Not that it's really bad, but there is a little bit of jaggedness to it. Also, on barrel number two on the right, it looks like the edge of each rifling land is depressed or deformed or something. I'm not sure what happened there, but it's not confidence inspiring. But I guess we'll see if that affects the groups or not. And after I took a closer look at the barrels and some different lighting, the radial marks in the bore are pretty easily seen with the naked eye. So this should make things pretty interesting. Anyway, let's go over the setup and then head to the range. The barrels were shot on two separate range days. This was done so that I could use the same upper receiver, BCG, handguard, and gas block. The upper receiver is a clear anodized upper from Bad Attitude Department. The threads were greased and the barrel nut was torqued to the manufacturer's torque specification. The handguard was fitted with a 3-inch front bag rider. The stock was supported by a rear bag. An A5 buffer system was used with an A5-0 buffer and Sprinco green spring. No muzzle device was used to prevent possible interference. Trigger is a Geisley Super Dynamic 3-gun trigger. The bore was fouled with a few rounds before starting the first group. Scope is a Vortex Viper 6.5 to 20 by 44 with rings torqued to 15 inch pounds. Magnification was set to 20 and parallax was set using a head nod test. A Garmin 0C1 Pro chronograph was used to collect velocity data. A Mantis X10 Elite was mounted to the front of the handguard to keep track of rifle stability and detect any possible shooter induced flyers. Groups will be measured using the Ballistic X app. Each group is 30 shots fired consecutively over about 4 minutes. This simulates a match or practical type scenario where the barrel will get some heat into it and it also gives us a decent sample size to work with. Between each group I use a chamber chiller and leaf blower for cooldown. Distance was 100 yards. Point of aim was a small circle at the bottom of the target. Point of impact was set a few inches higher to preserve the aiming point. Wind was monitored with a ribbon. Each 30 shot group took about 4 minutes to shoot and was edited down to about 15 seconds. Today I'll be shooting 3 groups. First is Winchester 55 grain M193. Second will be Frontier's 223 load of their 68 grain boat tail hollow points. And last, I'll be shooting Federal Gold Medal 77 grain Sierra Match King. And before we get started, for your reference, here's the best 30 shot group that I have shot with an Air 15 so far on video. It was with a Sons of Liberty Gunworks SPR barrel shooting Hornady 73 grain ELD match. And also, Ben Belkin, the owner of Jack Wolf Knives, gave me a chance to shoot his custom bolt action from Phoenix Custom Rifles. And here are the three 10 shot groups from that rifle. All right, with that out of the way, let's do it. Okay, starting things off with Winchester M193, the bulk FMJ load. Winchester M193 hasn't been grouping too well for me lately. Anyway, the ejection was a little bit weird. Barrel 2 was ejecting around 330, and barrel 1 was ejecting around 230. And again, both barrels used the exact same upper and BCG. Recoil felt a bit more stout than I would have expected, having a .075 gas port. I probably could have upped the buffer to a A5-2, but I stuck with the A5-0 for all the groups. Shooting wasn't perfect on my end, but I didn't have any significant concerns about my shooting on any of the shots. The Chrono and Mantis worked well. Wind was pretty calm for both groups, so I don't think that will be an issue. And we will finish up the group here and then take a closer look. Starting things out with the velocities, the average muzzle velocity for barrel 1 was slightly faster at 2,947 feet per second compared to barrel 2 at 2,939 feet per second, and the standard deviation was a fair amount better on barrel 1 at 22 feet per second compared to barrel 2 at 38 feet per second. Looking at the groups, they both look pretty ugly. Barrel 1 on the left has a donut looking group with basically no shots in the center of the group, and barrel 2 has some pretty significant outliers that went right and low. Taking a closer look at the group from barrel 1, shot 22 was the slowest and shot 30 was the fastest. Rifle stability looked fine with an average score of 99.6 and a low score of 99.1. Shot 24 is the only one that looked really out of place to me, and that shot felt fine on my end, and the Velocity and Mantis data look okay. So, it is what it is. Looking at the group for barrel 2, shot 3 was the slowest, and shot 16 was the fastest. Average rifle stability was a bit worse at 99.4, with shots 8 and 11 below 99.0. And then shots 1, 14, 16, and 29 it ended up pretty far away from the rest of the group. But those shots all felt fine on my end. Before we look at the numbers for each group, I'll take a minute to introduce my AZ score to the new folks. So, 
AZ stands for A zone equivalence distance, and it gives you the maximum distance where the calculated group size would still fit into a USPCA A zone, which is 5.91 inches wide. The reason why I use this score is just because it's easier for me to make sense of the group numbers compared to looking at the raw mean radius. All right, so barrel one ended up with a 30 track group size of 6.3 MOA and a mean radius of 1.9 MOA, which equates to an AZ score of just 74 yards. And barrel two ended up with a little bit better 30 track group with a group size of 5.9 MOA and a mean radius of 1.5 MOA and an AZ score of 92 yards. If you want to look at some more conventional numbers, here is the 30 track group broken down into three 10 track groups. And barrel one had an average 10 track group size of 5.5 MOA compared to barrel two with an average 10 track group size of 4.8 MOA. And to see how these barrels performed compared to other barrels, here's a look at the leaderboard for 55 grain FMJ loads. So there are a few different loads on here, but they are all 55 grain FMJ loads. Anyway, the BCM ELWs came in 12th and 14th place out of 14 groups. So not really a great performance. Although some of that may be the Winchester M193, which seems to be occupying a lot of space at the bottom of this leaderboard. Anyway, let's see how things go with the next group. Okay, moving on to the second group with the Frontier 68 grain BTHPs. This is the 223 load. Frontier also makes a 556 load with the 68 grain BTHPs that I've had some issues with before. So we'll see how this 223 load ends up. As you can see the group shaping up, you'll notice that things are looking quite a bit better than with the M193 from earlier. Anyway, shooting felt better on my end with these groups. Ejection looked fine with both barrels. Barrel 1 was ejecting at about 3 o'clock, and barrel 2 was ejecting at about 3.30 or so. Not every piece of brass ejected in the exact same spot. There was a little bit of variance. The Garmin picked up all 60 shots, and the Mantis missed one shot. Wind was pretty calm again, and we end up with some pretty decent looking groups. So, we will finish up here and then take a closer look. Before moving on, I want to thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the content and found it useful, it would help me out a lot if you could tip the channel with a $2 super thanks so I can buy more ammo and equipment to help grow the channel. Thanks again, let's get back to it. Okay, so barrel 1 has the higher velocity again with 2,540 feet per second compared to barrel 2 with 2,525 feet per second. And the standard deviations were pretty close with barrel 1 with an SD of 24 and barrel 2 with an SD of 21. Groups look a lot better than they did with the M193. Barrel 1 had a few shots squeak out high and left and barrel two had a few go low and left. Looking at the group for barrel one, the velocities all look fine. Doesn't look like there's any weirdness going on there. Rifle stability also looked good with an average of 99.6 and a low score of 98.9. Shot one went pretty high. Velocity and rifle stability look fine there, but I'm sure someone will blame that on being a cold bore shot. And then shots nine and 12 were a little bit further out from the rest of the group, but everything felt fine and looked fine with those shots. Looking at the data for barrel two, the velocity numbers look a bit different. The velocity extreme spread ended up at 94 feet per second with an SD of 21. Shots 2 and 14 had a velocity that was quite a bit lower than the rest, and shot 20 was a decent amount faster. So that was a little bit weird. Rifle stability average looked fine at 99.5, but shots 12 and 15 were a little bit less stable than I would like to see. And they did feel a little bit off when I broke the shots, but it looks like I got lucky because both of those ended up right in with the rest of the group. Barrel 1 ended up with a better group with this load by a decent margin, with a group size at 2.5 MOA, mean radius of 0.661 MOA, and an AZ score of 213 yards, compared to Barrel 2 that had a group size of 2.9 MOA, mean radius of 0.827 MOA, and an AZ score of 171 yards. But if you want to look at the average 10 shot group size, they both had an average 10 shot group size of 2.0 MOA. Moving on to the leaderboard, this board includes groups with both the 556 and 223 load of the Frontier 68 grain BTHPs, and the BCMs comes in second and third on this board, so not a bad showing here. But they're a pretty decent amount behind the Hodge that put up an AZ score of 296 yards with this ammo. Anyway, let's get started with the next group. Last group of the BCMs is with some premium ammo. Federal gold medal, 77 grains here, Match Kings. Velocity is usually a bit low with this load, but it usually groups pretty well. Shooting felt fine on my end with this group. I'm certainly not a perfect shooter, but I didn't have any significant concerns with any of the shots. Recoil felt fine with the Federal. It usually does since it's loaded on the lighter side of things. Wind remained calm for this group. The Garmin and Mantis work well with the Mantis missing one out of the 60 shots. Both groups end up looking pretty decent. The group for barrel two ended up looking a little bit weird. And barrel one is a pretty well distributed group with one shot a little low left. So we will finish up the group and then take a closer look.
Barrel 1 continues to have higher velocity, this time by a decent amount at 2,393 feet per second compared to barrel 2 at 2,356 feet per second. And SDs were pretty similar, with barrel 1 having a velocity SD of a 17 and barrel 2 an SD of a 20. The group for barrel 1 on the left looks pretty nice with one shot low and left, and the group for barrel 2 is a little funny looking, but we'll take a closer look at that in a second. The slow shot for barrel 1 was shot 19 at 42 feet per second below the average, and the second slow shot was only 24 feet per second slower than the average. So shot 19 was particularly slow for this group. Rifle stability looked fine with an average score of 99.6, and it did have one shot at 98.8, but it ended up pretty close to the rest of the group. Shot 29 was a bit further out from the rest, but the shot felt fine and the data looks fine from that shot, so that's just where that shot ended up. Moving on to the group for barrel 2, nothing looks overly concerning with the velocity numbers. Average rifle stability looked fine at 99.5, Although shots 3 and 17 dip below 99.0, and they felt a little bit off of my end. But I got lucky, and they both ended up pretty close to the center. And then it looks like shot 23 ran away from the rest of the group for no particular reason. Barrel 1 ended up with a group size at 2.1 MOA, I mean radius of 0.548 MOA, and an AZ score of 258 yards. Barrel 2 was a bit worse, with a group size of 2.7 MOA, I mean radius of 0.632 MOA, and an AZ score of 223 yards. Breaking things down into 10 shot groups, barrel one had an average 10 shot group size of 1.7 MOA, and barrel two had an average 10 shot group size of 1.9 MOA. And here is the leaderboard for the Federal Gold Medal 77 Grand Seer Match Kings. The BCMs come in third and fifth place out of seven groups with this ammo. And they are a pretty decent amount behind the Roscoe, which has a very comfortable lead, but the rest of the barrels are stacked up pretty tight with not a whole lot of dis distance between them. All right, so here are the overall results for the BCM ELWs. Barrel 1 shot better groups with the Federal Gold Medal and Frontier, and Barrel 1 also had higher average velocities for all of the loads. But you guys can let me know what you think of these numbers. Also keep in mind the issues that we saw with the bore scope. The throat for Barrel 2 looked to be in a bit worse shape than Barrel 1. Also, the rifling lands near the crown of Barrel 2 had some weirdness going on. And there were also the radial marks throughout the bore on both of the barrels. So those things may or may not have played a role in the performance that I was able to get out of these barrels. Here's a quick peek at the open class leaderboard. So this is the best group that I shot with each barrel with whatever ammunition that it shot best with. So this leaderboard isn't really a fair comparison since all the barrels haven't shot all the same ammunition. But if this information is useful to you, here it is. The BCM ELWs come in 8th and 13th out of 20 barrels. And they are basically lumped in in a pretty densely packed portion of the leaderboard with AZ scores in the low to mid 200s. But of course, keep in mind that I am not a perfect shooter, so I may not have shot all these barrels exactly evenly. And I'm sure that a better shooter could get at least slightly better groups out of these barrels. But these are the results that I have. Anyway, let me know your thoughts about what you saw. Also, if you've had a similar or different experience with the BCM ELW. And if you think that these barrels performed as you expected or if you're expecting things to go a little bit differently. Anyway, I think that'll do it for now. I'll see you next time. Later.